Welcome to Startup Health TV, I'm Logan Plaster. Build a better mousetrap and the world will beat a path to your door. My guests on today's episode, Chris O'Brien and Lindy Hirsch, aren't building mousetraps, but they're innovating in an area of life that is seemingly just as basic, the pill bottle. With their team at AdhereTech, Chris, who's the CEO, and Lindy, the Chief Marketing Officer, have developed a smart pill bottle that really helps people make sure they don't miss their next dose. The beauty of the product, which they call the Ada system, is its simplicity. The pill bottle can communicate with a doctor or family and friends about a missed dose without the need of an app or even an internet connection. In our conversation, we'll talk about why it's so important to lower the barriers to this kind of technology and what can be gained by helping millions of patients take the right dose at the right time. Stick around. All right, welcome to Startup Health TV. I'm here with Lindy Hirsch and Chris O'Brien from Adhere Tech. Uh, guys, thank you so much for taking the time with me today to really let me know what you're building and where you're going next. Thanks for having us, Logan. Thank you. So, you know, we've written about Adhere Tech in the past. It's this really interesting technology. I know with this smart pill bottle technology, and you've won design awards in the past, you know, helping people really understand uh, their medications, you know, how they're taking them, really work on, on working on this medication non-adherence challenge. But I understand the company's really gone through an evolution. So if you wouldn't mind, take me through the, uh, just the company evolution from the, the pill bottle idea, kind of break it down for me, and where you've been taking it over the last year. Uh, great, happy to. Uh, so uh, here Tech, uh, we have a smart pill bottle, as you say. Um, and what's great about this is it's just a pill bottle. Uh, if you are able to use a pill bottle, you can be in an Adhere Tech program. Think about digital health generally, uh, apps, other kinds of connected devices, they require a lot of people to use them. You might have, you need an internet connection. You need to have some level of, of clinical of skill. You need, might need to know how to sync uh, to Bluetooth. With the Adhere Tech pill bottle, uh, if you can use a pill bottle, you can be in one of our programs. And the key thing about it is it's connected. And I think what's really exciting about where the company is now is we've been working very hard on our ADA connected care platform. And the way that that works is as a patient, when you leave the physician's with office with a serious diagnosis, you're left with a care plan, but you're also left on your own to implement that care plan at home. And our ADA system changes that because we know for each of the conditions that we work in, what the patient behaviors be and when the patient goes home if they depart from that behavior they're supposed to take their, their dose every day at eight o'clock at night if they miss that dose window uh, we actually can register that through the sensors in the bottle and then something can happen and what happens is program specific but it might be that a nurse calls it might be that the doctor's office gets a message it might be that the pharmacist checks in with the patient the next day hey are you having side effects and that makes all the difference to getting back on track quickly as opposed to not knowing what happens to them for months uh, afterwards if one of you don't mind breaking down a little bit further, you said that um, there's a simplicity to this. You said if you have a pill bottle, you can do the program. What makes this truly simpler than another app or digital health program uh, that might have what would seem to the consumer like a similar framework? Yeah, really just the fact that the pill bottle is the product itself. Uh, there's no separate app you have to use. There's no internet connection. This is actually, among other things, there's a cell chip here that connects back securely to our ADA platform. And through that, as a patient, if you just use the bottle normally, what you get it from your pharmacy, uh, put your meds in the bottle when you get a refill, keep using this. And the difference is that when you open the bottle, we register that with our sensors. And so through that, we're able to tell when people do stop taking their meds, which they do for all kinds of reasons, side effects, concerns about affordability. And instead of that patient going on for weeks afterward, we're able to intervene at that moment in time and get that patient back on track. Can you give us a sense of the scale of the challenge of medication non-adherence um, or like you just described, just someone just you know, stops taking their medications for whatever reason? You know, it's unfortunately enormous in many of the serious conditions that we work in, uh, MS, cancer, there are far fewer than half of the patients stay adhering to their meds for the first year on therapy. And, and you know, it, it, the thing about these 
at this amazing time and uh, these medicines work, but they only work if you take them. And so uh, the key thing is, is getting people to get through that period of time after they've been diagnosed, dealing with the side effects, dealing with the changes in their, in their lifestyle that they have to make. Uh, and the ADA system helps them do that by keeping them connected to care, even when they're not at the doctor's office. You know, obviously, there's the the, the health uh, benefits of being on your prescription, or the the the, the negative effects of this non adherence. Uh, talk to me about the economic impact of medication non adherence. Well, I mean, there, there, it's 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 enormous in a, in a number of different ways. Uh, we work extensively with pharmaceutical manufacturers to help their patients to stay on therapy, and uh, that's both because that's better for patients, but of course, it's also better for them and that people that drop off therapy are no longer uh, filling those prescriptions. And that, that's very impactful to the P&L of the pharma manufacturers we work with. But even worse, the health outcomes for patients from that um, can be, could be very, very severe. And that causes downstream healthcare costs that are entirely avoidable. Emergency room visits, hospitalizations, uh, surgery, other kinds of consequences from that. And so um, we really think that as we evolve from um, working directly with pharmaceutical manufacturers is a really big opportunity with health systems that have gone at risk under their contracts and directly with payers. A piece of this that uh, fascinates me is, that a lot of consumers might not appreciate is um, the role of, of rare disease prescriptions, uh, extremely expensive drugs, basically. So, you know, there's the antibiotics that I might take, uh, and that might be the first thing I think about when I think of a prescription. But there are uh, folks with chronic diseases I know that are on incredibly expensive drugs. And so a product like this, uh, it takes on a, a whole new uh, benefit, both for the, the payer as well as for the 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 patient, uh, one pill can be worth thousands of dollars. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, and, you know, we work a, across a whole range of different conditions. In some cases, the meds are, are very expensive, and in some cases, they aren't. Uh, but in all cases, um, the patient was prescribed that medicine for a reason. And if they don't take the medication, if they drop off at some point, and, you know, again, they drop off for all kinds of reasons without anyone knowing. And so connecting them back to care by connecting them to their pharmacy, by connecting them to the physician's office, by connecting them uh, digitally uh, through the program, we can actually help that patient get through their, their care journey and stay on track. Talk to me, if you would, about the evolution of the adoption of products like this and really thinking through the last 18 months of covid uh, how is the industry thinking about smart pill, pill bottles, thinking about medication non-adherence, and how has that uh, viewpoint changed in recent years? So I'll, I'll take this one on. Uh, did the digital health tools, um, like the smart pill bottle, they've come a very long way. We're making a lot of headway. And it's important to consider that in making this headway that we've done a lot of things wrong. There, there have been, um, in the industry itself, a lot of programs that are focused on adherence that haven't succeeded and they haven't succeeded because they aren't fully connected. That's one of the main reasons. And we've been talking about that a lot and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more, but they're also not seamlessly integrated into the life of a patient or a caregiver. They have to use um, maybe programs or services that aren't easily understood. Maybe they're more sophisticated or complicated for the user. And so listening and learning and trying to integrate something that's seamless and can fit into someone's everyday life has been very important. That's how we're making those strides. We are creatures of habits as humans, right? We want, we want to uh, fit, especially when we have chronic illnesses, we want this to fit into our lives and not have extended reminders about being ill. And so as we continue to make these strides, we have like with the ADA system, integrated a very seamless tool that as long as you can open up a pill bottle, you can use this tool. It's as simple as pulling the orange pull tab and we even remind you when you need to charge it. So other than saying, I wanna take my dose every day at 9 a.m., unless something changes and we update in the schedule, you don't have to do anything but take your meds. And what we've seen with these results with integrating a very seamless technology like this is people decreasing their gap days, not missing their doses, staying on for longer and getting the outcome 
to, to get as they work through the type of healthcare that they're looking to receive with their healthcare professionals. And so it's really important that as we integrate these tools, we keep integrating tools that fit, that aren't more complicated and don't create a burden for patients or for caregivers. And so when we think about COVID, when we think about the idea of what's been happening over the last year and a half, we think about what we've said in the industry for a really long time, that people have sitting, sit around their kitchen table and they manage their healthcare, but it's never been more real than it's been in the last 18 months during this pandemic. And so what happens? People get disconnected. They aren't seeing their doctor as frequently. They aren't communicating as frequently. So the key to this is connection to care. And what we're able to establish with the ADA system and what we established long before COVID is that we keep patients connected to care. We give them the resources. We have communications that are ongoing. We create escalations where medical professional, professionals, their healthcare team may need to intervene. And that burden's not on the patient and time doesn't lapse in between time that they have a problem and we can connect them to care. And so that is our main focus. And I wanna tell you an example that did happen just a couple of months ago during, during COVID. We, we noticed that a patient had not taken their meds over a few consecutive days and that prompted an escalation. That first escalation was the outreach to the patient to understand why. And that patient believed that they couldn't afford the drug anymore and they were slowly taking themselves off the med. They didn't communicate it to the doctor. They didn't have any outreach. We were able to intervene, get them in touch with the people, help them get through and understand that they did have coverage and keep them on their meds and drive them towards these better, the better outcome and being healthier. Without that, think about the time that this patient could have gone without communicating to anybody having taken themselves off the meds. So that connection to care, especially during a time like this through a pandemic, even more important. And that's what we've been able to give and maintain with the ADA system. That's good. Uh, you alluded to the sort of the hard metrics behind this, the reduction in, in gaps in, in dosage. Uh, I wonder what some of those uh, proof points are that you can point to now. I, I know that Adhere Tech has really put a lot of time and energy into the trials necessary to prove out these platforms. So what are some of those big numbers that you that you tout? So when you know we look at each program individually, we look at accomplishing um, uh, different goals within each program. And what we see pretty pretty much on average across programs that we are decreasing gap days by two, three, four days within a month. That means more um, more pills taken, which increases a fill rate. And so then what we see on average one or more plus months additional in a year with the medication being filled. Why is that important? It's important because we know patients are taking their meds, they're staying on their meds and staying healthier longer. And that is ultimately what we're trying to accomplish here and decrease the times that people miss for all of the controlled reasons that somebody might miss their dose. And within certain sub, uh, subsets of patients, have you been able to draw some of those lines between uh, increased medication adherence and, and actual health? Uh, and just really kind of helping patients understand um, just the reality of, look, a few more days on your dose, an extra month a year on your meds has real life implications, real health implications. Well, we're talking about, in most cases, chronic illnesses with the programs that we support. And what, what you're trying to do in most cases with a chronic illness is stay as healthy as long as you can, whether it's a drug that slows the progression, combats the symptoms of, of an illness. And so what's really important to our programs is to help people keep that health for a longer period of time, stay healthier for a period of time. And if nothing else, if they're failing or they're having challenges or they're having adverse events, that their healthcare professional, their teams are integrated right away so that something can be done to change that. So it's not always necessarily just about a one pill increase per se, but it's about managing the whole of a patient and being able to know what's going on when they're not in an office, when they're not talking to a pharmacist, when they're not saying or remembering what their experience was 
to really understand if those medications are working or not. Gotcha. So what's next for Adhere Tech? What should we be looking for out of this company coming into the end of 2021 and into 2022? Well, we're working on a whole bunch of really exciting things, Logan. Uh, and in particular, um, you know, today we have a, a smart pill bottle. But of course, medicines are delivered in all number of different uh, forms. And so a lot of what we're thinking about is, you know, we can work in conditions today where you take pills. But what if you're using an injectable? What if you have an eyedropper? What if you have a dermatological product? And so we have some really interesting products under development. You know, we've hired some just really amazing folks over the last um, two years building on our founding team. We've got a great uh, of engineers and product designers, and we have some really interesting new hardware products that will be coming out uh, over the next year. And that'll let us get into some really interesting new categories, uh, as well as to support some really interesting clinical trial use cases uh, that we uh, that we we can't support today. You bring up an interesting point just about the the breadth of the industry. It's not just about pills, obviously. I mean, we, we talk a lot about digital therapeutics. We're, we're really broadening what it means to give someone a prescription. I spoke recently to someone who is running a company that wants to be able to prescribe uh, video content to patients to help them be educated about their health. So we're, we're broadening what it means to take your next dose. Um, and I wonder if you could just comment, since you've been in this industry, just on the market itself, on kind of the, the maturation of this medication adherence market and where you feel like we're, you know, heading, where, where we're seeing consolidation right now. Well, I, I think we're really at the beginning of just an overall movement to healthcare being fully connected all the time to, to patients. And, and Adhere Tech is certainly part of that. I mean, you think about all the trends out there, the rollout of 5G, miniaturization of, of different uh, chips, uh, Internet of Things. There's just a lot of different ways in which it's going to become much easier and much less expensive to make very high quality medical devices that can be connected in the home. But that by itself just produces data. There's no there's no program there. There's no change in care. And so I, I think what we're really excited about over the next few years is with the ADS system, building models of patient behavior, and then connecting a series of different devices to that so that we can know when a patient leaves that doctor's office, the uh, care plan, when they depart from that care plan and get them some kind of help. You know, It might be as simple as a text message saying, hey, you should be checking your blood pressure today, like send us a reading. Um, but if that patient is departs from the care plan too far, something else can happen. It might be a visit from a home health aide. It might be a call from the doctor's office. It could be a call from the pharmacist. And that's what, what makes all the difference of changing the, the, the trajectory in real time when that patient gets off track. If there's a patient, uh, average consumer who's watching this and, and they're like, uh, I would like this pill bottle for myself, for my loved one, um, you know, how are you reaching consumers or is this only through specific hospitals or pharmaceutical programs? How does it work? Yeah, today it's deployed only with um, in specific programs. And, and the reason for that is, is really just the, the pill bottle by itself is just a pill bottle. It does have lights and chimes. It'll remind you of that. But you're not connected to care just with the pill bottle. The programs are designed top down with the knowledge of the condition itself, what the series, what the different care plans that that patient might be assigned by their physician uh, in order to keep that patient uh, compliant to that care plan over time. And that's just not something you can deploy if, with a product you buy off Amazon. And just how much have you been able to deploy it? Kind of who are you working with and, and how broadly have you been able to work with patients? Well, it's, it's, it's uh, ever more patients every day. We've deployed a number of new programs this year across uh, MS, across a number of uh, uh, interesting uh, psychological categories, which is a new area for us, uh, working in, in a, a wide array of different oncology so uh, the number of patients is going up uh, all the time, and it's, it's something we're, we're very excited about. You know, I want, to, I want to close out by giving you guys both a chance to really give me your sort of health moonshot vision. And something I'd like to ask the founders is, look, if this really works at scale the way you're envisioning it, uh, what is sort of the, the bigger audacious benefit to patients that you could see five, 10 years down the road? What does the life of the patient look like? Uh, what are some of the things that we are avoiding five years from now because this got um, distributed throughout society uh, in a way that uh, just is even bigger than you're envisioning right now? So uh, I'd love to hear that from each of you. I have spent the last 20 years in 
consumer marketing and pharmaceuticals mainly in my career. And focusing on programs like this and integrating how we can stay connected and understand what's going on with patients. And what was really exciting for me to come to Adhere Tech was the idea that we could solve this issue. We had the ability to solve this issue that becomes the holy grail of programs to support patients. And I believe we are well on track to solve this issue. There may always be issues with adherence that are out of our control, that in healthcare that we can't necessarily touch or understand what's going on. But the disconnect was to be with patients in their home in real time without seeming like you're lingering over them, that it's invasive. Mm -hmm. We are not. And what I believe our moonshot is and where we're going and where we'll be in the next few years is to have a really well integrated programs that seamlessly through technology fit into every type of household across all demographics and allow the ease of communication of what's going on so that healthcare professionals know as a patient when you're in front of them, what's gone on in your last few months, what's happened so that we can really make the best choices about what's next for your treatment, what's next for your overall health care and health management. And we have the ability to do that and we will have the ability to do that in a bigger, broader sense over the next few years. Chris, your health moonshot vision for where this can go over the next five, 10 years? Well, I, I think like for me, uh, everything that Lindy said, but, but at the same time, if you think about that patient just leaving the doctor's office, uh, they're just fundamentally alone with a new diagnosis, with a new care plan. And, and I think the, the, what we're seeing in, the, in our programs today, and I think the opportunity over the next you know, three, four, five years is that you won't be on that health journey alone anymore. There'll be people supporting you the entire way. And today, of course, it, it's only in very serious conditions um, that our, our programs are deployed. But, but I think tomorrow, as the technology becomes less expensive, as uh, new hardware devices become available, um, everyone with in any kind of a serious condition is going to be connected to, to care and potentially even to each other. I think there's this, this way that people sitting alone will suddenly be part of a larger uh, system and that that will then uh, to both be more compliant to their care plans and have better health outcomes, but just feel better and know that, that there are people there to support them. Beautiful. Actually, I do have one last final question, which is that a lot of the folks who uh, watch our content are actual are entrepreneurs, founders in, in healthcare technology. Uh, like yourself, they might be earlier stage. Uh, and you're a company that has uh, thrived over time. You've, you've succeeded in clinical trials and in, in raising the funds necessary to create a, a, a manufacturer of physical product. And I just wonder if you could share just a, a piece of wisdom from uh, the last year or two of growth, kind of what helped you to thrive during COVID and kind of get you to the place you're at right now. Well, what's, what's been really amazing for me just coming into it here, Tech, uh, over the last two years has been working with the founding team that has stayed just incredibly true to their vision over a very long time, almost 10 years uh, of, the, of the company now. And, and I think it's, a, it's something that, that people say a lot, but it's very, very hard to do. Uh, in 2011, when uh, Josh Stein, uh, John and Mike started this company, uh, they, they've been very focused on getting people connected to care through a, a hardware device something that's very easy to use that doesn't require them to have any technical skill. So it's just from a health equity perspective, it's been really important. But the other effect of all of that is just that it keeps people in the program longer because they don't have to do anything special. And that idea that um, their core idea of just a, a program that people be successful without having to, to do anything new and different, no behavior change at all, I think is, is what carried the day uh, for the company overall. I love it. Uh, Lindy, Chris, thank you so much for taking your time with me today. I really appreciate hearing more about what Adhere Tech has built and where you're going. And we're definitely going to be watching you at the end of this year and going into next uh, where you go. Um, so thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Logan, really appreciate it. All right. Take care. And be well. You too. Bye. Bye. Patients love the Adhere Tech program because it improves care with a great patient experience. It's so effective because it's simple and seamless. Patients receive a free smart pill bottle with their specialty medication. 
the bottles require zero setup. Patients simply use it just like a normal bottle and automatically get all of the benefits of the program, including helpful reminders for missed doses. The system is intelligent and will only send a reminder when a dose is missed, so it essentially acts as a safety net for patients. These gentle reminders are sent as a text message or a phone call, whichever the patient prefers. The program provides personalized support for refills and health issues. At some point during treatment, patients may require timely support for issues related to health or any other problems that may arise. If a patient needs additional support, AdhereTech system notifies their pharmacy. The pharmacy then knows about important issues earlier, so they can contact the patient to provide support sooner than ever before possible. That's why thousands of patients worldwide love using the AdhereTech program every day. A quick word about this show, in case you're new around here. At Startup Health, we believe in broadcasting the stories of health moonshot progress, the stories of the most forward-thinking entrepreneurs in health. If you want more of this good news about healthcare's problem solvers, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, hit that notification button, and follow us on social media at Startup Health.